Hello and welcome to Theater Appreciation at Motlow College. Um, you could have taken an art class, a music class, or a theater class to fulfill your general requirements and you chose theater, so welcome. Um, I'll be your professor, Emily Seal. Um, so some of you are veterans to this online course format, but some of you may be taking an online course for the first time. Um, I have taken lots of online classes. I have built this from the ground up, so I'm very proud of this class. And if you have any questions about how to navigate D2L, we have a D2L help desk support staff and they can help you with your D2L questions. So as you navigate the, the um, website and you're like, I'm just not really sure how to orient myself to all of this, um, going and calling that D2L help desk or going in and asking for help around how to navigate D2L at your specific site um, is a good place to get started. Those of you who are veterans at online classes, welcome. I um, have studied how to teach an online class and I have very specific ways and methods that I'll go over today. And um, hopefully this will be a good experience for you. Um, however, as an academic advisor, part of my professorship duties includes being an academic advisor. I see students sign up for online classes who are trying to do it all. Maybe they're trying to work full time and go to school full time. Maybe they're taking too many classes. And um, I can tell you that a lot of the classes where I'm having to sign people up for the same class to repeat it because they failed it, there's disproportionate amount of those are online classes. So I just want to warn you about that. Um, theater. Uh, theater is an academic study just like anything else and taking an online class requires a certain amount of discipline so if you're a person who has trouble keeping up with a budget or a diet or you can kind of just think of yourself as maybe not as much of a disciplined person an online environment not might not be the right place for you so um, I say that to say if you know you're not an organized person get out your calendar, put all of these schedules, study your syllabus, make sure you know everything. Because if we're in a regular class, I can kind of say, recognize your face, say, hey, we didn't see you last class. Whereas if somebody falls off the wagon and stops coming to the online class, there's just not as much accountability. And so um, it's easier to forget due dates, it's easier to get behind. So please stay on top of it. This class is asynchronous, which means you can work ahead if you're feeling ambitious one day, or if you're like me and you have small children, you know, and you can work while they're at grandma's house or something, you know, you can knock out more than one module at a time. Um, feel free to work ahead. So um, I try to be as flexible as possible. Uh, just have to keep communication open. And if you have any problems, personal problems throughout the semester that are going to affect your work, please let me know about that in advance. You know, if you email me after the semester is over and say, oh, well, I had surgery and so that's why I didn't turn in that paper, um, you know, that's too late. So if you know at the beginning of the semester that the reason you signed up for an online class is because you'd have surgery, go ahead and sit down and write me that email now and say, hey, I'm having surgery on these dates. I'll have all my work done before then. Just wanted to let you know if I don't reply to an email, that's why. Um, you know, keep those lines of communication open with your professor. We're much more likely to be understanding if you let us know on the front end. So if you've already printed off your syllabus, you can see that there uh, is only three textbooks required for the course. Well, these two are actually the same book. So if you bought it used or you bought it from the bookstore, it might be blue. Don't be thrown off. It's the same content as that black book. Um, we did something called Include Ed. Uh, there's a whole lot of bureaucratic nonsense involved in that. Just um, the it involved rebranding the book so that's why it looks blue rather than black but that's the exact same book if you want to not go through our provider and you want to buy the book online or something then that black book is the one you're looking at so um, and then we have a supplementary text which is Joe Turner's Come and Gone by August Wilson once again um, I do ask that you um, 
you know, get a hold of that book, you're going to need it as you write your paper. But as far as what edition or what version, it doesn't matter to me. They all have the same act and scene numbers, which is how you'll reference it. So don't worry about um, what edition of Joe Turner's Come and Gone to Buy. Any edition is just fine. It can be part of a compilation of August Wilson's books. Whatever is the cheapest way you can find it is fine with me. But I do recommend getting your textbook. Some people have tried to share their textbook and other things, and um, I don't recommend it. So once again, you have two textbooks, um, the Cohen Theater brief version or and Joe Turner's Come and Gone. So right up on the first day, I want to tell you one of my pet peeves. When people come to me and they say, I'm just not artistic or I'm not creative, um, you know, you'll be asked to draw a costume and ring, you'll be asked to write a monologue. And when you go into math class, you don't tell your math teacher, you don't have that kind of defeatist attitude. Well, you know, I just can't add two plus two together. Um, creativity is a critical thinking skill. And while you may not have the best drawing skills, you may have creative problem solving skills. And so please don't write yourself off as an artist. That breaks my heart because you are a human being and human beings uh, have a creative element to themselves and may manifest itself in different ways. Maybe you write songs, maybe you um, have different intelligences, but it doesn't change the fact that when I ask you to be creative, I expect you to try and not just say, well, my art teacher told me in second grade that I couldn't draw, so I can't draw. Um, you know, that is not the gritty sort of can-do attitude that I need for you to have when you're taking a college level course. So um, try to be creative, try to apply yourself. This is a discipline for a reason and art is a discipline for a reason. It will expand your mind and help you to um, tap into parts of your brain that maybe haven't been exercised in a while. So um, there are a lot of small assignments in this class. And like Denzel is saying there, um, you may um, kind of coast through something and take it easy and not really apply yourself, but it might catch up with you in the end. We have a lot of small assignments, but there are big papers that will reflect how well you've listened during the um during the lectures and how much you've read during you know if you have been keeping up I'll be able to tell by the paper um, and then also for the final exam that is over all of the work all semester so it's not like you can start in chapter two talking about Aristotle and forget it when we get to chapter three because you're gonna have questions about Aristotle on the final exam so um, make sure you're reading make sure you're deep diving um, please don't um, slack off all semester and then be mad when you don't do well on the final exam because it's a test of how well you've done all semester long. So like I said uh, we'll have a quiz every week and those quizzes are due by midnight 11:59 on Sunday nights. Now if you're like me and you like to keep your Sabbath by all means get them done by Friday. Get them done by Wednesday. Um, you don't uh, need to wait to the last minute because there's going to be very few ex exceptions for me reopening that quiz and letting you take it late um, and like I said you know if if the kids are at grandma's and you want to get three modules done in a week you know and you have that kind of time or maybe you work um, you know one week on one week off it's a very flexible schedule those are just the absolute last time you can get it done by right so if you want to do chapters one two and three before even chapter one module is finished then by all means work ahead um, discussion questions. So I ask you to reflect on the chapter. It's usually something personal like, um, well the first few questions are get to know you questions and those are really personal. I mean what do you want to tell us about yourself? But then once we get into the material it's your time to reflect. Okay we were just talking about creative skills. If you could be a makeup designer, a costume designer, a set designer, or a sound designer, which one would you personally be? be and why and so um, maybe you weigh into that and say oh I've always liked makeup or um, I'm really handy with the miter saw whatever <laughs> personal reflections but that um, we have learned in retention strategies that if you guys are talking to each other you're more likely to teach each other things and process the information and if it if you have an emotional reaction to the 
to the information if you start to process it on a different level then that helps with retention so maybe by the time we get to that final exam and I ask you you know who on this set of crew and you're like oh yeah I remember makeup because that's what I would want to do so that's why I'm asking you these questions I ask that you not only write your response but also respond to a couple other people's responses so that um, people are getting feedback and you guys are talking to each other and uh, you know make friends in the class and if you guys want to go see plays together and stuff that's great that's a um, th just because it's an online environment doesn't mean you have to lose all of the college experience so your first paper is due at midterm and that is Joe Turner's come and gone analysis so I have an entire lecture about how to write that paper as well as a handout with specific questions for you to follow along with um, it is a character analysis which is kind of like a psychoanalysis you pick a character and then you analyze them from the perspective of that character you know what's their motivation why do they act the way they do um, what's their what do you think their parents were like so it's sort of an imaginative activity but then it's also based on your reading of the script so it's a little bit of both a little bit of art and a little bit of science so this is the big paper that's due at the very end of the semester and it has to do with you going out into your community and seeing a play. I ask that that play be a minimum of two hours. I ask that you um, stay through the whole thing. Some people leave it intermission and think I won't notice when their paper only is over the first half of the play. Um, I would encourage you to um, find what interests you. So maybe uh, you're into Shakespeare and you want to go see Nashville Shakespeare in the Park. Um, maybe you really love musicals so you want to go to um, your local community theater when they do um, a revival of Romeo um, West Side Story you know something like that so find what suits you uh, if it's something that is not listed in that first section of live production critique so I have like a little section where I recommend some plays um, based on the different communities so for example, if you're in Fayetteville, I put Von Braun Civic Center on there, so maybe you want to go down there. If you're in the Smyrna side, I include TPAC. Uh, I try to kind of cater to all of our locations, um, but maybe uh, you, if you f are going to go out of town, for example, or maybe you're in the military and you're on leave, just make sure you send me a copy of the play you're going to see and let me look at it first because here's what happens. Um, I've had uh, one of my military students was in Las Vegas and they saw a lounge act and wrote a critique about a lounge act. Well, a lounge act isn't theater. It doesn't have a plot line. It's more of like a stand up and sing, kind of tell jokes. It's more of a concert. So um, just make sure you just send me a link to that producing organization and I can check it out and make sure that that's a true theatrical experience. Um, I'd rather you not see a ballet. I'd rather you not go hear Handel's Messiah or a concert. You know, if you were taking dance appreciation or music appreciation, then those would work. But just because it's at the Performing Arts Center doesn't mean necessarily that it's a play. So I've given you that suggest suggestions of things that are playing during the class that I think would be good opportunities. And if you kind of go outside of that scope, just check in with me. I'm totally open to, you know, especially if you're vacationing in New York City or in Orlando, these places that have great theater, Atlanta, um, by all means, I'm open to it. I just want to make sure before you buy the tickets that it's something you can use for the purposes of this class. People also ask me, can I write it about something I've seen in the past? And I would ask you not to do that because I want you to see it through the filter of what you've been studying. So maybe you saw Lion King two years ago at TPAC, but it's not fresh. And I want you to um, you know revisit a new experience and then, like I said it doesn't have to be an expensive play you can go see free Shakespeare in the park you can go see your local you know MTSU maybe is doing a play or you go to the Motlow Children's Play or um, a production that's going on at the Moore County campus you know it doesn't have to be expensive in order to be good I just want to make sure that it's a substantial piece of traditional theater like I said earlier you know there'll be creative opportunities and um, oh and also with the costume rendering you can just take a picture of the of the uh, rendering with your phone and email it to me um, if you don't have a smartphone but maybe you have a fax machine you can fax it to me if you have a um, 
if you want to kick it old school and just want to hand in a paper version of your rendering, um, you can give it to any secretary at any location and they can send it to me in the courier over to my office. They all know how to contact me. So no excuses. <laughs> um, and like I said, at the end of the semester, you'll need to register through testing services to go into one of your locations. So if you're in uh, Smyrna, for example, you'll go to the Smyrna Testing Center and take your final exam on the computer. So you'll actually log into your D2L and you'll see the final exam there, but there is a password that the proctor will put in. Excuse me. And so um, that proctor will put in that password and then you will have a closed book you know, um, final exam experience. So when you see final exam, you can click on it, but it won't let you take it without the password that the proctor has. And uh, like I said, that's usually during final exams week. And so I need you to be at your respective location during final exams week. Now, if you're having surgery, you're going to be out of town, um, then just make sure that you finish early and we can register you for your final exam early. And I can go ahead and Get with testing services about that. Um, so I know not every class at Motlo that's an online class has a that you have to come in to take a proctored final exam but unfortunately in the in my experience there's a lot of cheating going on with these online classes and so the only way for me to 100% make sure it's you taking the final exam is if you show that proctor your ID, that proctor is watching you to make sure that it's a safe testing environment. Um, and so the other question that I get a lot is for people who've already taken online classes is, oh, well, on your quizzes, you don't let me see the answer to my quiz question. I really would like it if I could have three tries to get the quiz questions right. And um, I know that there are all kinds of ways that I could set up my D2L. I've taken lots of online classes. I teach online classes, um, but I've chosen for them to be closed questions and that you only take it once because um, of that cheating. So I know that that's punishing some of you honest people for the discretions of your peers, but um, I've just found that that's the l biggest way to prevent cheating is by not giving you the correct answer to any given question. So all of the correct answers are in your textbook. So, um, you know, I don't mind if you jot down notes while you're taking the quiz and say, um, you know, there are the key terms, vocabulary terms for every chapter. You can see which terms you ought to be looking at, which ones are testable and the most important, uh, you know, and and maybe you look at that key term and say, okay, which one did I not study the most? Which one do I think I got wrong? Um, but these are... Um, I'm not going to give a lot of leeway on the way that I present the quiz questions because of the cheating that I've experienced in the past. So um, you can email me or write me about it, but just know it's I'm a hard sell. All right, so I refer to that word module and it throws people off. So module is in most of these classes uh, in the summer, it's a little bit shorter, but for most of these classes, it's one a week. So chapter one is week one, chapter two is week two. In the summer classes, especially like chapters um, 10 and 11, I think I bunched those together just because it's a little bit more compact. But in a module, first you read the chapter in your textbook. So even if I don't cover a term, especially if it's in that testable terms, make sure you've read the whole chapter. Um, I believe in reading. Uh, reading is the way that um, most of the educated community learns. Now I know we all have our learning styles and all of that, but at the end of the day we need to read and if we're going to be educated people. So then obviously you can watch the video in the lecture. Um, the videos are sometimes YouTube links. If one of those is out, please go ahead and email me quick and say as soon as you take it and it's out so that I can take it down and replace it or put on the, you know, board, the discussion board, hey, I'm sorry, this link is gone. Because I try to include like cutting edge, fun theater things that are going on. Um, but then sometimes that's just an advertisement and it gets taken down after the show is over or something like that. So if you have a broken link, like I said, I've built this sucker from the ground up. So please let me know as soon as possible if, if you have a broken link. Many of the links that you'll be, the videos that you'll be watching are through a streaming database through Motlow College's um, library so you'll have to log in. 
Now, the first couple times that you do that, especially if you use the same computer over and over again, um, you may need help from a librarian with that streaming digital media. Um, so if you don't have a library, a Motlo ID, and you've never been into the library, I would re recommend doing that. They're the ones who can make sure that you're using the databases correctly and um, help you set up that digital streaming uh, that digital streaming software and using it and hey it's great you know you can watch documentaries about all kinds of things uh, I love the digital streaming um, I you know some of the I just like to go in and watch different things that are in there like I watch Netflix so um, uh, it may be a good resource for you and uh, speaking of learning styles, you know, I'm a very visual person, and so sometimes when I have to go do research for other classes, uh, even if it's not the arts, I prefer, you know, these videos, I think are a really great resource, but I digress. Obviously, um, so after you've watched the lectures, after you've done your reading, then you're informed, and you can go and write on the discussion board. Some people will try to race ahead and answer the discussion questions without being in the material, and I would not recommend that because you're not going to be as articulate. You're not going to have, you know, for example, I ask you to write a monologue. Well, the entire lecture and um, content in the book is about how to write well. Well, if you write the monologue before you read all the stuff about how to write well, meh, you know? <laughs> so do things kind of in the order that they are set up and, you know, chronologically as you work your way through each module, I think is kind of how I've set up the course. And then um, sometimes there's an activity and sometimes there's a paper, but sometimes there's neither. And then I always encourage you to look at those terms before you take the quiz. There's, um, you know, I tell you which terms are the most important, and I will admit I don't cover every single thing that's in the textbook. Uh, we would be here till doomsday if I did. Theater is done all over the world for all time, so there are an infinite amount of things we could talk about. Um, I have, you know, I love poetic realism in America. I mean, I could talk to you about Tennessee Williams for 20 uh, for an entire class, and I have to really condense this content and really just focus in on a few things each chapter so you can kind of get a, a snapshot of what's going on in different parts of the world at different times. So I say that to say those terms, people ask me, you know, well, how do we do well in your class? Really, I give you which terms are most important and I give you a checklist. So just make sure you're thorough each week, make sure you've gone over everything and you know um, you can check it off your list, right? And also wanted to say that that supplementary videos, there are questions on the quiz that may not be in the text, but they're in the video because I want to make sure that you're taking the time to watch those videos because I think that they enhance your experience of the class a lot and help put things into a real world context. So for example, your first assignment is to watch a, um, a documentary about a theater in Canada. And I think it's a great documentary. I think it um, teaches you a lot about what it's like to be in a theater now with a real hands-on experience. And I give you a worksheet to follow along as you take that. But that worksheet, you don't actually have to turn it into me. It's more of a study guide for you to see what are the important things to be listening for. So I try to sort of um, help you process information and hopefully that's helpful, but don't feel like you have to turn in that worksheet about um, the documentary. It's just for you to follow along, and then of course you can use those notes as you take your quiz. And then the big kahuna at the end of every week is making sure you get that assessment finished, that quiz finished, um, by Sunday night at 11.59. <laughs> So here's what happens, and I'm also a speech and communications person, um, you know, I, I do both theater and speech, and um, what happens sometimes in an online environment is trolling, right? People, you're not looking somebody in the eye, you don't have that personal connection of being in the room with them, so t sometimes it's easier to be ugly via email or on the message boards and I just want to say up front that I will not tolerate that at all. Um, this is an arts class. People are making themselves vulnerable. They're, you know, 
contributing creatively and I fully expect you to be respectful of that. Now, you only have to reply to two different people's um, messages. So, you know, if somebody rubs you the wrong way, if they say something you don't agree with, you don't have to comment. You don't have to comment on every single person's... Um, I would also say, if you're going to see a play and it offends you, leave. Don't stay. <laughs> I had a, you know, Rent was done in Tullahoma. It was very controversial. It was done by a youth theater. Um, and even though I love Rent, and I'll talk about Rent um, when we get it to the musical theater section, there were some people who that deeply offends. Uh, but they felt like they had to stay until the end. No, get out of there. Go see a different play. You know, um, I don't want you to feel trapped. Um, you know, this is a highly personalized thing for you. You can go see any play as long as it's a legitimate theater. Um, so don't feel like you have to ever say anything you don't want to say, but please always be mature. I know some of you are on, in the high school level taking this class, at, you know, for college credit, but you're still in high school. And I want to challenge you that there's adult material in this class. It is a class for adults and so um, I, uh, I don't apologize for that but I do want to warn you up front um, that we'll be talking about um, theater which is like all arts um, has an element of sex and violence in it because those are the two universal uh, ways to experience being a human. <laughs> so mm, sort of a little disclaimer there, this is an adult class. Uh, you don't have to see a live production if it offends you, but I definitely um, want you to see a live production. So, And also, with that, make sure that you, if you are a guarded person, then make sure that you read about the play before you show up for it. Don't just walk into Rocky Horror Picture Show if you don't know anything about Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, and by all means, you don't have to see Rocky Horror Picture Show if that's not what amuses you. So... Um, this is all about um, finding, you know, the entertainment that's right for you, learning about what entertains other people, and we all want to keep open, but we also want to be respectful, and anytime you feel uncomfortable, feel free to message me personally, right? Um, don't let it get to the point where you're so upset that um, you write me a scathing email, right? Don't, don't let it get there keep the lines of communication open. I'm here for you. Um, I have offices at the Moore County site and the Smyrna site. If you would like to come in and make an office appointment with me, I'd be happy to talk to you more about whatever is concern for you in the class. I know some people just like to come in and meet me so that um, they have a face to go with all this uh, voice and they, you know, just to um, continue to connect with the professors, which is totally fine. So, Please, if you haven't already, get out your calendar, put these dates on your calendar, um, you know, make sure that you're working in a way that's timely, that's the best way to get your success, and then also engage each other, have fun with this class. I love theater, I think it is so much fun, and I think this is a class where you can have a lot of fun too. So. All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and get on the message boards and start introducing yourself to other people in the class. I look forward to getting to know you. As always, thank you for listening.